What? 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 But hold on. Wait. But if you got a dead priest next to you, they didn't just put noise on their feet. They put a rope around their waist. Just in case the priest died, they could drag him out of there. You got my permission tonight to drag every dead priest off of your rope. Everybody that won't praise God, tell them, baby, you're going to have to find you another row. Because everybody on my row going to get a miracle tonight. Everybody on my row about to get a breakthrough. I tell you to scream like you know something about to happen. Now, I got 10 seconds. So let me share this with you. You're supposed to make noise. Not just with your mouth, but the Deba Zuzi be Christi be on Dalabakaya. The devil don't like when you use your feet. The Holy Ghost told me one time, he said, You need to use your feet. I say, Why? He said, The devil don't like it when you use your feet. I said, Why? He said, He ain't got none. I say, How you know? He said, Tell him because he's been. Defeated, and you can shout when you get God. I dare, dare, I dare you to use your feet. I dare you to use your feet. I dare you to use your feet. God bless you. I said, dance. Use your feet. I said, use your feet in here. Y'all better get ready. Word Network. Don't turn your television. Some good is about to happen. I need somebody to use your feet. Break out in the house. Dance all over the gym. If you were to ask a hundred different people what they're looking for in a church, they'd probably give you a hundred different answers. A life-changing word an anointed music ministry, a place of genuine love, care, and support, a multiplicity of programs and outreaches that extend beyond the walls of the church. Most people would look for a church with a strong foundation, yet is open and receptive to 21st century ministry applications and methodologies. That's our vision and our mission here at Greater Grace Temple, the City of David. I'm Bishop Charles H. Ellis III, Senior Pastor, and Amazing Grace starts right now. We celebrated Palm Sunday just a few weeks ago here in the city of David. Jesus came riding into Jerusalem. It was a triumphal entry. He was on the coat, the foal of an ass. People were crying out, Hosanna, blessed is he who cometh in the name of the Lord. They begin to praise him. They begin to magnify him. And that's the praise that he's looking for in 2015. I preached a message on that Sunday entitled, A Full-Time Praise. And that's what the Lord expects from us. He wants us to give a full-time praise and to be a full-time praiser. I know that this message is going to bless you. Call a neighbor friend, let them know that Bishop Ellis is on the air. Now let's go into the service already in progress. Because you can't get into Wayne State. Hello. But this is a university that everybody can graduate from. And Paul said, all of us, you, me, black, white, rich, poor, educated, ignorant, can rejoice in the Lord always. And again, you can rejoice through everything. And you can graduate from this school, but you've got to get to a place. And you've got to get to a level where you see things as they really are and not as they appear to be. All of y'all in here today had a different look on yesterday. You had a different look last night. That's why it took you so long and you got in here late today. Because you was putting that church look on. Because you got in too late to get that other look off. So you slept in it. Got up and had to get that look off. And had to put the church look on. So we come in here and we got the church look. 
We come in here and we look like we got it all together. But we're just one person from arguing with us to leaving the church. We're just one prayer that takes too long to get answered from falling out with God. Even though we got the look. And I will say that the devil ain't afraid of your look. The devil is afraid of your praise. The devil is not afraid of your long skirt. The devil is afraid of your joy. That's why he tries so hard to get you to lose your joy. Stop talking about the devil stole my joy. He can't steal your joy because he didn't give you no joy. He just bring hardship and try to get you to give your joy away. But somebody ought to hold your joy in the midst of tears and hold your joy in the midst of hurt and hold your joy in the midst of hardship and pain and all kind of things that you're going through. If there ever was a time to rejoice in the Lord, always it's on a stormy day. It's on a hurting day. It's on a painful day. And if you can rejoice then, you can rejoice anytime. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. He said, if you can accomplish this. Watch this. He says, and the peace of God. Who in here has enough money to buy peace? The world in particular, the Middle East, have been fighting since Jacob, Esau, before then, Ishmael, and Isaac. And are two of the wealthiest communities on the face of this earth. So that ought to tell us that money came by peace. If money could buy peace, then we wouldn't be involved in what's going on over in the Middle East. He says, if you can rejoice in me always, and again, I say rejoice. Take your seat. He says, here's what's going to happen. The peace of God. What kind of peace, Paul? The peace that passeth all your understanding shall keep your hearts and keep your minds through Christ Jesus. Let's talk about the heart and the mind. Nothing can disturb your peace other than a broken heart. Y'all playing. Nothing can disturb your peace more than a broken heart or a perplexed mind. If you get your heart broken, your peace just left out the window. Your health start declining. Your appetite begins to, well, some of y'all's appetite. <laughs> Let me look this way when I say that. <laughs> some of y'all's appetite begin to decline, deteriorate. If your mind ever gets bad, peace is gone. You have to guard your heart. 
Y'all better hear what I'm saying. You, you have to guard your heart. And you have to guard your mind. I, I, I was talking to Bishop Jackson. And uh, uh, I was giving him condolences. He lost his mother Friday. And he said, Bishop, uh, my assignment is over. I took care of my mother. She lived 90, 91 years. I said, man, that's a blessing, 91 years. He said, God gave her a good marriage after my, after my dad. She was married for 30 years after my father died to a good man, pastor. And, and that was it. She came back, lived with us, took care of her, and my assignment now is over. I said, man, listen, I thank you for being so kind to my mother when she came over there the other day. She told me you were so nice to her and spoke highly of her and told me that you should talk to her. About, talk to you, she, she talked to you about money years ago. And he said, man, your mother made me the financial man I am. I said, I just taught it on a Sunday morning. I said, my mother, University of Wilma Ellis, <laughs> made me a financially responsible and prosperous person that I am today. Bishop Wayne T. Jackson just gave me that testimony. He said, your mother came over to see me, and I stood up before my congregation. He said, this woman here, she gave me financial advice as a young man, and it has blessed me to this day. I said, she told me, you, you reached in your pocket and gave her $200. I said, stop that. She came home looking for money. Bishop Jackson gave me 200 I said, well, going back over there. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, I said, I'm praying my mama will be 81 this year. 81 years old. And I'm praying that she live to be at least 121. Because I'm going to be 98. And I still want her to be here when I get 98. I said, God blessed her 41 years with my father. 41 good years with a man. And then another 14 or 15 or 14 years, 18, whatever it was, 14, 18 years with another good man. And I told him, I said, that's it, she done. Can't nobody else get a heart. Because if they get your heart, they can destroy your peace. Hey Amen. If God gave her two good husbands, I'm declaring and prophesying. That's it. Another joker come through and take time off her life by destroying her peace. If your heart get messed up, because y'all know about the heart, don't act like y'all don't know about the heart. The heart will cause you to make some decisions that you never would have made. The heart will cause you to be broke, have bad credit. Y'all playing, y'all playing. The heart will cause you to be bankrupt, making decisions that you never, ever would have made in your natural born life. And now your peace is gone. You can't let nobody have your mind. Say something in here, y'all. Say something in here. I ain't giving nobody my mind. You can't mess with my mind. You can't play with my mind because if I ever lose my mind, that's a equal to insanity. I need my mind to be sane. And if I don't have my mind, then I become insane. And if I'm insane, I have no peace. But Paul says, if you can accomplish this joy in the midst of sorrow this joy in the midst of pain if you can rejoice in the midst of your tears he says that I'm going to give you a peace I mean the kind of peace that is going to pass all of your under you ain't going to be able to figure it out Folk ain't going to be able to figure it out. People that used to get up under your skin ain't even going to phase you no more. Folk talking about you and you used to use sleep, lose sleep, you're going to be sleeping like a rock. 
you ain't going to be studying them folk. You ain't going to be worrying about them folk because I done gave you a peace that passes all your understanding and them folk going to get tired of messing with you, trying to push buttons that don't exist anymore. Anybody know that you used to be in a place where anything would set you off and now you hear it and don't even care. You hear it and it don't even bother you. Is there anybody that want to get to a place where the doctor can tell you you've got six months to live and you can start praising God? Because if I ain't got the six months, I I ain't going to spend that six months complaining. I'm going to spend those six months giving God the glory and blessing his name. That's the kind of peace that passes all of your understanding. He says now, finally, somebody say finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true. And ain't nothing you can do with truth but accept it and go to the next level or reject it and stay where you are. Truth is here to cut the light on for you. Truth is here to help you to do the right thing. Truth is here to keep you on the beaten path. Truth is here to help you to do what God has called you to do. So whatsoever things are true. Then he said, whatsoever things are honest. How many folk in here wish to God that everybody that you dealt with was honest? You talking about you talking about taking a load off your life. If I ain't had to ask you five times and look to see whether your nose is twitching or, or whether you patting your foot, if I could just take you at your word, take you at your word, if I could just... Uh, I just had a situation here where some producers ran in some trouble. You were there. And, and, and they didn't have all the money. And, and, and one of the artists was in the hotel and said they wasn't coming. They said, they ain't, they ain't coming till I get my money, Bishop. And they, they supposed to have my money. And the folk had the money. It was just tied up in like the ticket master, you know. So they get paid in a few days. So, so they didn't have the cash on hand to pay the artists. So, so... I stepped in because I saw the fella he was just he, he didn't know what to do and folk all in there waiting on the concert so I said listen son I said I'm going to call him and, and, and I'm going to tell him come on and I'm going to take care of him I said but now listen I don't know you I said but you ought to now know me because I ain't sure nobody else would do this for you Larry Robinson from God's World was sitting right there. He said, let me tell you something. I don't know a whole lot of folk that would do what he's getting ready to do. A lot of folk would say, let the chips fall where they may. But he's trying to save your program. Uh, 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 Bishop, I, I'll sign whatever you want me to sign. I said, son, listen. I said, hear me good. I ain't trying to type up nothing. Because a paper ain't worth nothing if you're not honest. I ain't got time to spend five days in court. I got things to do. I got places to go. My schedule is busy. So either you got the money coming, and I saw where you do, so either you're going to go get that money and convert it and bring it to me, my portion, or you just are not honest and ain't enough paper in the world that we can draw up that's going to make you honest. So, 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 so either you are or you are not. I ain't got time to come to the court. Hey Amen. Some judges, they're on time, some late. <laughs> hey Amen. So, 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 so thank God, Sister Kay. Uh, they kept in touch with me through Ray Washington. 
Ray was texting me. A bishop, they say, they picked the check up on Tuesday. And Tuesday, a bishop, they got the check. They put it in their bank account. It takes two days to clear. A bishop, they say, they'd be over to the church Friday, 1 o'clock, with the check, cashier's check. And they came, cashier's check, it was there. My whole point is, either you are honest or you are not. And either you say, if this man don't know me and going to go to bat for me with his own money, then this is a man that I want to know forever. Whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, he says what? Think on these things. All right, let's talk about this thing and then we're going to get up out of here. You've got to see yourself some places. You've got to be able to take your mind to some places that you are not at yet. You've got to see some things that God is doing for you. And your mind has got to already be there. And you've got to now be trying to get to where your mind is. You know your mind can take you to some other places too, right? That's why you got to keep your mind on healthy things. Because sometimes when we find ourselves doing things that are detrimental, it all began where? In our mind. So what are you thinking about? What is on your mind? I've had such a stressful uh, week this week. I mean, stuff was going on. I had to deal with over here and over there and down south. And bishops calling me and need advice on this and advice on that and dealing with all kind of stuff. And I'm like, good Lord, I'm trying to get up out of here. I got two weeks of marriage coming up and I'm all set to go to Dubai so what I had to do was I had to send my mind to Dubai and right now my mind is in Dubai I'm just here teaching and preaching today but my mind is already on the golf course it's 86 degrees I'm already on the beach in du are y'all hearing what I'm saying God is just blessing me to give you a word before I get out of here at 5 30 today but my luggage is already at the airport my passport has already been screened my baggage has already been checked my, uh, my, my uh, 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 boarding pass has already been printed so I'm already in Dubai in my mind and later on I'm going to leave about Atlanta and get on a flight for 14 and a half hours and I'm going to end up in Dubai but my mind is already there so ain't nothing you can say to upset me here because I'm already in Dubai somebody ought to already get your mind to heaven get your mind heaven bound and stop dealing with jokers down here and let people upset you down here here and cause you to miss heaven is there anybody whose mind is on heaven tell that neighbor send your mind send your mind send your mind send your mind to heaven send your mind to glory and now your body gonna follow your mind send your mind to heaven and your steps are going to be ordered by the lord send your mind to heaven and you can shout on a stormy night send your mind to heaven and you can praise god when you sick in your body send your mind to heaven and people can talk about you and it don't mean a thing because your mind is already in the will of God. Tell that neighbor I'm a full-time praiser. Yeah. How can you be a full-time praiser when you just lost your job? Because I already see what God is doing for me. How can you be a full-time praiser when you just got diagnosed with cancer? Because I see God as my healer. How in the world can you be a full-time praiser when your house is on the rock? When your marriage is on the ski? Because God is my refuge. He is my Jehovah Shammah. And he'll be my Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace who is right here with me in the midst of my struggle. Everybody standing. Paul said, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, somebody say, and again, and again, and again. I say, rejoice. He expects from us a full-time praise, not just on Palm Sunday, but every single day of our lives. Again, Psalm 150, let everything, that's you, that's me, that had breath, let us praise the Lord and praise his name. A full-time praise from full-time praises. 
I'm going to be one. How about you this brand new year, 2015? I certainly hope that you've been blessed by the word on today. You can secure it for your tape library and have it in its entirety. It was a tremendously anointed message here and service in the city of David a few weeks back on Palm Sunday. Call the telephone number that is on your screen. You can secure it for very nominal fee and I know it will continue to be a blessing to you. Let's pray now in the prayer of faith. Lord, we thank you for giving us breath. Now help us to use that breath to magnify and to glorify your name every single day that we might be full-time praisers, giving you a full-time praise. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. I've got some prayer counselors sending by the phone line. Call the telephone number now. Get some help in your time of need. God is just a prayer away. And also, I'm inviting all of you to become a Grace Covenant partner with us. You can be in fellowship with us. You can be in communion with us. You can be in relationship with us and spiritual connection and covenant. By calling the telephone number that is on your screen, ask them about our covenant partnership. We would love for you to partner in helping us to take this message to the entire world. I hope to hear from you real soon. Well, listen, my time is up, I've got to go, but always know that we love you and we're praying for you right here from the city of David. Be blessed. Greetings, beloved. You know, I was thinking just the other day about the tremendous platform that God has given us to be able to air this gospel message and so many great things that we do all over this entire world. And I thought about sharing with you and inviting you to become a part of our Covenant Partner Program. You can help us to continue to stay on this platform to help change lives for the better. There are some individuals that this is the only gospel message that they receive. And what a blessing that God has allowed us to come into that home or into that space to share with somebody in their time of need the wonderful works of the Lord. I'm certainly inviting you right now to join us in this Covenant Partner Program here at Greater Grace Temple. If I've been a blessing to you, and if this ministry has blessed you over the years, then I'm asking you to help me now to continue to be a blessing to you and so many others. I certainly hope to hear from you real soon. Grace and peace, my brothers and sisters. I'm Bishop Charles H. Ellis III, extending a special invitation to all senior pastors to join our exciting and expanding fellowship, Agape. This graceful association of pastors ecumenically will afford you the opportunity to network, fellowship, and to glean from senior pastors all over this country and even this world. There are no yearly dues or fees aside from one initiation fee of $200. This pastoral fellowship will provide you with a spiritual covering and connect you to the powerful anointing that God has placed upon our life. Please know that Agape is available to all senior pastors regardless of reformation or denomination. Therefore, won't you join us this year and begin the year off by enhancing and aligning your spiritual endeavors with Agape, a graceful association of pastors ecumenically. This is the Pastoral Fellowship for you, and I hope to hear from you soon. God bless you.